Hey guys, welcome to the channel and another video. Today I'm going to be watching Halloween by John Carpenter. As you guys already might know, I love John Carpenter movies and I've watched and reviewed quite a few of them on the channel, including Escape from New York, The Thing, Big Trouble in Little China, and They Live. All of these films are either classics or cult classics, so please check them out when you have the time. They're all on the channel. All you need to do is search Sean Watches Movies, followed by the name. John Carpenter is an excellent horror director, and he really knows how to stretch a budget. And come to think of it, this is probably the earliest film I'm reviewing from him. I'm excited for that. Not only have I heard of this movie, uh, but I also know that Jamie Lee Curtis is probably in it. That's, that's awesome. I've just watched uh, True Lies on the channel, which was great too. I know that Jamie Lee Curtis got famous because of horror films, so I really want to see her in her element. But apart from this being a horror or a slasher film, I don't know too much about it, except the main bad guy is called uh, Michael Myers. Uh, I wasn't allowed to watch this film back in the 90s when I was young, and I kind of mixed up this Michael Myers character with another character, Freddy Krueger, from the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, movies. Both of them have white face masks or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I was young. And I actually haven't watched the Nightmare on, on Elm Street films too, so if those are worth watching, do let me know. Uh, but I do recognize all these faces because they kind of pop up in pop culture everywhere right so i'm excited for that but before we get into it to help support the channel i have a patreon page for full length reviews and reactions to this movie and over 230 movies two tv shows early access to weekly polls for what to watch next you'll need your own copy to watch along and the links in the description below please consider being a patron please subscribe to the channel click that bell icon for instant notifications do check out my other videos like if you like this video feel free to dislike it if you didn't with all that being said let's get started john carpenter's Halloween, Jamie Lee Curtis. Let's go! Donald Pleasance. I don't believe I recognize that name, or probably I do, I just don't remember. John Carpenter's Halloween. I like the music already. And knowing John Carpenter, he's, he's doing his own score. Introducing Jamie Lee Curtis. So this is literally her first movie. Wow. I think he did the score for They Live and The Thing too. Screenplay is also by Carpenter. He's like super involved in the filmmaking process. There you go. Music by John Carpenter himself. <laughs> Not surprising. Halloween Night, 1963. <laughs> Even judging from the first frame, I can tell that it's, it's not an expensive film. I don't mind that because John Carpenter knows how to utilize his budget. Ooh. <laughs> Kids making out. So the camera itself is a character here? Are they being stalked? I think so. <gasps> we saw a shadow. He's got a kitchen knife. I love these POV shots. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that I'm not usually scared of horror films at all. I just like the thriller or the slasher aspects of it. Dude, the... Oh man. Oh man, the girl's all alone. And by the way, is this like one single shot? If it is, it's massively impressive. Definitely <laughs> an R-rated film. Michael! Michael. So this is Michael Myers. And she clearly knows her. But I can't believe how casually he killed her. Michael? Ah. <sighs> Michael is a child. A very disturbed child. Probably just killed his sister, from what I understand. Holy crap. 1978, so it's 
almost what 15 years later so we have a time jump and michael is older now Ooh, i like that intro it sets up the story very well you ever done anything like this before only minimum security minimum security they're going to a prison where michael is most likely you haven't anything to worry about oh, no it's out of prison he hasn't spoken a word in 15 years it's a psych hospital so the doctor wants to take him to court to make sure he's never released and he hasn't spoken in 15 years Thank you. doesn't the hospital have some sort of security he just stole the car was that michael myers i got it I think so. Looks like he escaped. And we're back at Haddonfield. I mean, you already killed your sister, dude. Are you coming back to get your parents? Or are you just crazy and you're gonna go on a killing spree? <laughs> Don't forget to drop the key off at the Myers place. Myers. I won't! Yeah, I think that's Jamie Lee Curtis's character. I've never seen her so young. <laughs> It's always in her later films that I've seen her in. Coming over tonight. Same time, same place. Obviously, no one wants to live at a house where a child committed a murder. So far, the main highlight of the film has been the camera work, but also the cinematography. Dude, he came back to his house. Why isn't the police here already, right? I love how John Carpenter is framing our main antagonist, never getting a full view of him. Nobody listen. There's nothing else I can do. You can get back in there and get back on that telephone, tell him exactly who walked out of here last night, and tell him exactly where he's going. Day of reckoning with himself. <gasps> the idea is... He's stalking her. Which is yeah. a stupid pumpkin. Leave me alone! He's gonna get you. He's gonna, He's gonna get, get you. you! Look at these haircuts. They're distinctively from the 70s. The boogeyman is coming. Leave me alone! He doesn't believe us. Sure. Don't you know what happens on Halloween? Boogeyman! Boogeyman! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the worst thing is, there's actually a boogeyman running around. The body language of the actor portraying Michael Myers is also very good. It's almost robotic. You've got to believe me, officer. He is coming to Haddonfield. I'm his doctor. You must be ready for him. <laughs> Nobody's taking him seriously. <gasps> Rabbit in red. What is going on? As usual, I have nothing to do. It's your own fault, and I don't feel a bit sorry for you. <laughs> oh, man. He's here again. <sighs> yeah, it's not a coincidence. Hey, creep! <gasps> Excuse me, Laurie. Oh, Mr. Brackett, I'm sorry, Mr. Brackett. Oh, I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, it's the sheriff. It's also her friend's dad, okay. They all live in and around the same neighborhood. That's interesting. Her windows are open. I mean, that in itself isn't unusual, but... <laughs> John Carpenter is doing a great job in building up the suspense with the musical cues. Hey, is that a Raggedy Ann doll in the background? Who is this? They're very popular, right? You just have time. The good doctor's investigating. Why do they do it? Goddamn kids. They'd do anything for Halloween. He took the gravestone. He came home. What's the pumpkin for? I brought it for Tommy. I figured carving a jack-o'-lantern would keep him occupied. I love how relentless the pacing is in the sense that it's always scary. Even w w during a lighthearted moment, they're being stalked. We don't even know how he looks like as an adult, right? Hi, Annie. Laurie. 
can probably smell it on you guys. What happened? What? What happened? Oh, uh, somebody broke into the hardware store. Probably kids. All they took was some Halloween mask, uh, rope, and a couple of knives. Yeah, all they took is a uh, couple of masks, a knife, and some rope. <laughs> Nothing to be concerned about, guys. Right behind you, man. And now he probably knows the doctor's looking for him. I mean, I, I, I guess I don't understand why Michael Myers is going after her. Is it because she's literally the first person she saw near his house? I also don't understand how he knows to drive a car that well. If he's been in a psych hospital for 15 years since he was like 7 or 8 years old. Is anybody live here? No, not since 1963 when it happened. They're actually at the house. He could have seen inside. Dude, a crazy killer is on the loose. I don't blame you for carrying a gun. <laughs> Come back. I'm gonna wait for him. I also like how this Michael Myers character is written. Um, we're not seeing too much of him. We're seeing other characters talk about him, which is very good writing in my opinion. What's the boogeyman? Boogeyman. Boogeyman's outside stalking you guys. Lindsay, get this dog out of the kitchen right now. I think the dog's justifiably freaked out. I just talked with Ben Tramer and he got real excited when I told him how attractive oh, you were to him. Dude. Oh, Annie. Oh, you didn't. Please tell me you didn't. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Do that. Lori, the boogeyman is outside. Look! He's gone. Well, it won't hurt you to go out of him, for God's sake! He's actually going over to... I mean, we know that he has no trouble killing animals. Yeah, I expect quite a few people to die by the end of the film. The thing! Holy crap! The thing wasn't out yet. The Thing came out in 1981, so there's a older version of The Thing. I like the idea of John Carpenter already thinking about The Thing back in the 70s. The Boogeyman can only come out on Halloween night, right? While I'm here tonight, I'm not about to let anything happen to you. Promise? Promise. Well, I never believe in promises in movies. You know how that goes. <laughs> I mean, again, this film is not scary in the traditional sense, but Carpenter is making me scared for the characters, if that makes any sense. Oh my foot! I'm stuck! <laughs> ah. Was this shot really necessary, Carpenter? <laughs> it's probably half the reason the audience went to watch the film. Now promise me you won't tell anybody about this. You'll have to call him tomorrow. Besides, I'm on my way to pick up Paul. Leaving her with two kids. But now he sees her, that she's alone. Just the thought that Michael Myers could strike at any time is, is, is really raising my anxiety levels. Dude! The door was unlocked. She did not unlock it. Oh, I think he slashed her or stabbed her. She's dead though. What the f fudge? Tommy, 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 stop it! He's getting lazy! He's over there! Tommy, stop it! Now there's nobody out there! Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. Yikes. You can either ignore it or you can help me to stop it. <laughs> These guys are so dead. Annie, we're here. There's no more Annie. <laughs> They're not even bo <laughs> They're not even bothered by the fact that there might be a little girl in the house somewhere. They're just going at it. I'm preparing for a jump scare. There 
Lunes. <laughs> oh, that sound effect. It's interesting how little gore we're seeing. It's all in the camera work and ambience and the music. That's what drives the horror in this movie. Oh, dude, he's wearing that kid's glasses. All right, all right, come on, where's my beer? The fact that not only saying anything, he's not even moving is, is very creepy. Uh, 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 Hello? Uh, Oh, man. <laughs> Are you fooling around again? Please don't go to investigate. You have like two kids under your care. He's killed like five people that we know of. Four on screen and the fifth one off screen. He actually brought the gravestone with him. He's recreating his sister's murder. How messed up is that? That was a good jump scare. <laughs> Just hanging you upside down like that. And another one! Oh, that's so cool. That reveal was my favorite shot of the entire film. That was awesome. Somebody help! Oh God, help me! Upstairs. What is it? Oh, right upstairs, get Lindsay locked the bedroom door. Oh no. He's in. Oh. Yeah, now she's like super freaked out. Please stop. <laughs> oh, straight in the neck. He didn't even scream or make any noise. I wonder if he can talk, though. I mean, I think she's in shock, right? I killed him. <gasps> you can't kill the boogeyman. <laughs> can't believe she left the knife right next to him. I love the score here. <laughs> Did it go through his eye? Oh, I think so. She got him. I think she got him. There's no blood on the knife though. Keep the knife in your hand, you dumbass. <laughs> I mean, I also understand you're clearly in shock. I want you to tell them to call the police and tell them to send them over here. Oh, now, do you understand me? Oh man, he's not dead, is he? The way Mike, Michael Myers is being framed right there, you go. <laughs> Dude, we get to see his face. Just for a second before he's shot dead. Hopefully. He's gone. Is he? Is he like a immortal being or something? He got shot a couple of times, stabbed in the chest. One eye got poked out, and he still somehow escaped. And that's why we have so many sequels. That makes sense. <laughs> I bet this movie was like super scary back in '78. I think this final scene is implying that he could be anywhere in your neighborhood. <laughs> If you hear heavy breathing, be scared, guys. Oh, man. Halloween. This was so good. This was unexpectedly good. Please let me know which John Carpenter film I should watch next. Uh, whether it's Escape from L.A. or... I don't know. He made a bunch of films I haven't watched yet. Okay, I took some time to collect my thoughts. First off, that was a classic slasher film. Although it had elements of horror and thriller, I'd consider it primarily as a slasher movie. I don't believe I even have any real criticisms here. I guess a couple of the choices the characters make, they're a little cliche. But then I realized that movies like this invented tr these tropes and 
pioneered slasher films that came after it. The other negative, if you can call it that, is I uh, is probably the gunshot effects and sounds, which looked and sounded pretty fake, but that's also very forgivable considering the shoestring budget Carpenter had to work with. He was excellent as not only the writer, but the director and composer too. He's just an incredibly multi-talented person. There are no two ways about that. The other strengths of the movie were its camera work, um, cinematography, uh, pacing, lighting, uh, score, and how minimal it was when it came to the actual gore. I have to really admire Carpenter for his restraint here, for not overdoing the violence, if that makes any sense. I mean, he achieved scaring the audience without showing too much blood or gore. That's an achievement in itself. Let's start with the directing by John Carpenter and the script by him and Deborah Hill. The story here was exceedingly simple, but the execution was nothing short of masterful. Basically, a crazed killer comes back to his uh, former hometown after escaping from a psych hospital to kill some teenagers on Halloween. That's it. When you hear that, it might not sound super exciting, but what Deborah Hill and John Carpenter, they, they, what they do brilliantly was create an atmosphere where not only the characters on screen, but the audience as a whole. We were on the edge of our seats the entire time. I mean, our antagonist doesn't even speak, speak a single word, nothing. We don't even get to see his face properly, I believe. Maybe a couple of frames near the end of the movie. The whole stalking aspect of the film, the POV shots from the Michael Myers' perspective, that was just a stroke of genius. It puts us in the eyes of the killer, and that's not somewhere normal people are comfortable at, like looking through the eyes of the killer as he commits murder. That's, that was awesome. The heavy breathing also added to the creepy factor, and that coupled with a quiet suburban neighborhood, again, created an atmosphere of paranoia where the audience is just looking at every frame expecting Myers to jump out. When you think of it, he only killed, what, five people on screen, which is a lot less than some modern uh, slasher films. But what the film lacked in gore, it made up, like, <laughs> it made up ten times in suspense. That's a sign of a good writer and filmmaker. And considering that this was one of Carpenter's earliest films, amazing job in the director's chair. His score here was also top-notch. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but he was one of the first directors who used uh, synth sounds or even prototypical electronic music in horror movies, even before it was popular. Uh, just like his other films, the music here was unique to him and very memorable. The other aspect of the movie I was very impressed with was the production end. Even though some of the blood, uh, the gunshot sounds and the gunshot effects, and even the stabbing scenes looked a little fake. It honestly had the intended effect. And furthermore, it was mighty impressive what Carpenter was able to achieve with such a tiny budget. It's a miracle, honestly. From the location scouting to the very simple costumes and sets, it looked really good. And I bet it was made with a lot of love and it was well thought out. The sound effects in the movie were another highlight in my opinion. They helped sell some of the more scarier scenes. For example, when Bob was stabbed, that knife sounded heavy and full of weight, for lack of a better description. The performances from the cast, they were okay, not award-worthy or anything. Um, the actor playing Mike, uh, Michael Myers was excellent physically. He was imposing, his body movements were minimal, deliberate, and almost robotic to a point. Jamie Lee Curtis was also pretty good, especially considering this was her first film. I totally see why she got like super famous. She plays a scared person so, so well. Finally, the ending also left me very uneasy as uh, Michael Myers escapes, and we only get to hear that heavy breathing, which, which is also a great choice narratively. Uh, it creates 
anxiety within the audience. Plus, it has the added benefit of uh, spawning more sequels. <laughs> I know there are quite a few of them. Overall, Halloween was a real slasher classic from the amazing John Carpenter, a true jack of all spades. From his direction, writing, and score, I don't have anything neg negative to say here. He created an atmosphere of paranoia and anxiety which lasted the entire runtime. Keeping the actual gore to a minimum really elevated the horror and thriller aspects of the movie. I can see why Mike Myers, uh, that character, is infamous and is considered truly scary. It makes sense to me now. Even Jamie Lee Curtis in her fil film debut was a joy to watch. I know there are sequels, so do let me know if any of them are worth watching, especially those uh, reboot films from 2018 or 2017. Just let me know. Also, please recommend another John Carpenter film, as I still haven't watched Assault on Precinct 13, Starman, uh, Prince of Darkness, Escape from LA. Which one should I watch first? Or should I watch another John Carpenter film? Oh man, he's so good. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching. I have a Patreon page. Please consider your Patreon. Subscribe to the channel. Click that bell icon for instant notifications. Do check out my other videos. Like if you liked this video. Please dislike it if you didn't, but don't. <laughs> I will see you in the next one. Bye.